Lake Clark National Park is bear country. Inland brown bears are found throughout most of the park's 4 million acres. The park's inland brown bear habitat is divided into two parts by the Chigmet Mountains, part of the Aleutian Range. East of the mountains, along the Cook Inlet coast, are resource-rich coastal habitats, where coastal brown bears forage in salt marshes, dig razor clams along the shore, and fish for salmon. These rich habitats support large numbers of bears living close together. Some of the highest bear densities in Alaska have been recorded along the coastline of Lake Clark National Park. West of the Chigmet Mountains is an inland habitat that is very different. Food resources are widely distributed across the landscape. We know little about how brown bears use these inland habitats. Brown bears are both a culturally and economically important species in the state of Alaska, and bear viewing generates substantial revenue for local economies. And brown bears are also a keystone species, so they're really important for judging the overall health of an ecosystem. So despite all of this importance, very little is actually known about the brown bears in Lake Clark. We know on the coast that there's probably about 150 brown bears per thousand square kilometers. And then we also have a basic um, estimate of densities in the interior, which is about 39 brown bears per thousand kilometers squared. But other than a basic density, um, we don't really know very much about them. We don't know about the resources that they're selecting for. We don't know where they den. We basically are lacking a lot of basic information on the ecology of the bears in the interior. In an effort to better understand the lives of inland brown bears, scientists from the National Park Service, United States Geological Survey, University of Alaska Anchorage, and Mississippi State University are undertaking a four-year study to examine how brown bears are utilizing the inland habitat in the park and how that use changes over the course of the year. Using GPS radio collars, researchers are trying to answer three key questions about Lake Clark's inland brown bears. Where do inland brown bears live? What do inland brown bears eat? How do inland brown bears move? We're really interested in looking at um, the specific home ranges of different sex and age classes of bears, specifically looking at how male bears will use the landscape differently than female bears, and within females, are they using it differently when they have cubs of the year versus yearlings, and basically um, how they're using that in relation to other bears. We're also really interested in looking at what areas the bears are using specifically and what resources might potentially be in these areas to determine what is driving the movements of the bears. Um, for example, are they moving long distances to get salmon? Are they staying in specific areas where they know there's a lot of good vegetation to eat? Um, so it's going to be really interesting to see how they're using the landscape and what their, what their home ranges are like. So far what we found is all the mountainous habitat in inland Lake Clark provides standing habitat for bears. Um, we've had them widespread throughout the southern portion of the interior. Um, what's been more interesting is after they emerge from the dens in terms of the home range use for bears. So we've had some bears that have moved over 100 miles and had large home ranges, maybe up to 2,000 square miles, whereas we have other bears that have never moved uh, greater than 10 miles from their den site, so have really small ranges, about 40 square miles. So they seem to be choosing and using um, resources differently, and that's reflected in kind of their home range size. Another component of that is we're really interested in looking at the behavioral aspect of denning. So if male bears and female bears are denning in different areas, and what's driving that? Specifically, are females with cubs denning in harder to get to areas that are high elevation, steep slopes, in order to avoid predation on their cubs? or are they denning in areas where they might have easier access to high quality food resources when they emerge in the spring. So it'll be really interesting to look at these components and see what specifically is driving where they den and why as well as the timing of denning. So far one of the really interesting facets I think that um, we found truly noteworthy is if you look at the range of Gates of the Arctic Lake Clark and Kodiak, we go from the extreme north of Alaska to some of the harshest habitat that bears exist in, all the way to Kodiak Island, which is some of the luscious, most productive bear habitat in the world. And within those, bears are obviously making a living. And what we found with Lake Clark bears is some of the bears are showing signs that they're 
diet composition is very similar to what a bear that lives on the North Slope would have. So primarily terrestrial prey and not necessarily that rich in salmon resources, having actually no to limited access to salmon. Whereas other bears are showing that they're using salmon as extensively as bears on Kodiak Island. So what it shows us is that in the interior of Lake Clark, we have a broad spectrum of habitat that has various levels of quality and bears are, are choosing to use those differently. And what also is interesting is with location data we've collected since den emergence this year, we've seen that all the bears have salmon nearby. So the fact that some are choosing not to use salmon as a resource seems really interesting and kind of surprising. So it's been really interesting seeing some of the movements of these bears, um, specifically the bears that have moved west. We've had numerous bears move really far distances and two specifically moved over 100 miles from where we originally captured them. And it's been really interesting seeing them make these big moves and how they've done them so quickly. Um, and these areas um, are full of a lot of salmon streams. So it's really interesting seeing the bears move to the areas that might receive salmon sooner than the interior parts of the park here. Um, on the other hand, we have several bears that have never gone more than nine or 10 miles from their den site. So very small scale movements and living in small areas. So uh, very isolated movements that they're making and they're obviously meeting all their resource needs there. So very um, wide ranging variability in movement patterns. These preliminary results are not only giving us the first glimpses into Lake Clark's inland brown bear population, but they're beginning to point to the diversity of strategies that individual bears use to survive in the park's more resource-constrained inland habitats. Answering these three basic questions will create a baseline for long-term monitoring of the inland brown bear population, helping ensure that we understand and effectively protect these magnificent and powerful creatures.